Greetings everyone, JC here for Interface, and this time around we're going to take a look at the Sony SSB3000 bookshelf speakers. Last week I found myself in that most unpleasant of situations where, out of the middle of nowhere, my trusty Polk audio speakers that I had had for 12 years suddenly decided that they were going to start presenting me with audio issues. Namely, that the woofers themselves developed a rattle where any time a low note would play, the speakers would give you a nice sound along with the bass note. Well, it didn't take long to figure out that what was going on was that the woofers themselves had just simply given all they had and it was time for them to be replaced. Now, when you run into these types of situations, you have two choices. Either you can attempt to replace the offending driver itself or replace the entire speaker system. The cabinets on my Polk speakers were in pretty rough shape and replacement woofers proved to be very difficult to find that were an exact fit. So that left me searching the internet for a new set of speakers. Two things caught my attention about the Sony B3000 bookshelf speakers. First of all was the really low price and the second thing that caught my attention was the fact that these are three-way speakers with a woofer, squawker, and tweeter. It didn't take me very long at all to decide to go ahead and get me a pair of these speakers so this giant box arrived at my door just a couple of days ago. Here's a look at the abbreviated specifications for the Sony SSB3000 speakers. Frequency response is claimed to be from 50 to 50,000 hertz. Now, my cats have not told me one way or the other whether the speakers actually put out up to 50,000 hertz, but my ears are telling me that the high end is definitely nice and flat and uh, goes way out there. The impedance is 8 ohms, which means it works with most stereo receivers and amplifiers you'll run across, and uh, we have three elements to the speaker system. We have an 8-inch woofer, a 3-inch mid-range speaker, and a 1-inch dome-type tweeter. Sensitivity is 88 dB, and uh, the speakers themselves can handle an input up to 120 watts. Physically, the Sony B3000s integrated very nicely into my present system. The dimensions were just about the same as my Polk audio speakers, so uh, it wasn't a major deal to take the Polks out and put the Sonys in. The audio quality was surprisingly good for the price. We'll talk more about that in a minute, but first I want to talk a bit about uh, one of the coolest features of this speaker system, which is the fact that it's a true three-way system. Taking a closer look at the dome tweeter that is built into the Sony B3000s, we see that it's a pretty standard looking little tweeter, one inch across. Uh, the Sony folks put a little guard across the tweeter itself, which is very nice to see. Many high-end speakers have piezoelectric dome type tweeters with no protection, which means that if you actually bump the speaker, you could very easily damage the tweeter. The main driver elements of the speaker system are Kevlar cones, this is the 3 inch squawker or mid range, and there is an 8 inch woofer. Getting the Sony B3000 speakers connected is quite easy with the clip type connectors that are in the center of the back of each speaker, and they are large enough to accept all but the very heaviest gauge of wire. So if you're like me and you use standard zip cable for speaker wire, you should have no problem whatsoever getting these speakers connected. Taking a look at this rear view shot of the Sony SSB3000s, you'll see the connectors in the middle of the speakers, and below that you'll see the bass reflex port, which vents the 8-inch woofer. The audio performance of the Sony B3000s was shocking for the price that you pay for them. The bass was well defined, there's a lot of it, but it is not thumpy, and the speakers did not get mushy even at moderately loud volumes on the low end. Having a three-way system where you actually have a speaker that is dedicated to reproducing the mid-range frequencies means that you get very clean reproduction of things like voices, trumpets, strings, electric guitars, cymbals, and so forth. And uh, probably the weakest point of the system is the tweeter itself, the very uh, top speaker there. It's a one-inch dome tweeter. It tends to be rather directional uh, the way the system is set up which means that as you move around the room you can hear the high frequencies better in some places than others. This is a very small complaint uh, when you're talking about a speaker system that cost me less than a hundred dollars. 
the overall flatness of the system is uh, very nice indeed. You get nice deep bass, very clean reproduction of the mids, and nice crisp highs. If you're coming from a set of speakers uh, where you had a two-way system uh, and the mid frequencies weren't that well reproduced, these speakers might strike you at first as being a little bit harsh at loud volumes. However, at moderate or low volume, it's just a very clean sounding system with good reproduction of voices, which makes it uh, nice for maybe like a home theater setup where you're going to be using this to uh, reproduce television audio or audio from movies. Um, so this, that is definitely an application that these speakers would excel at. But uh, they're good all-around speakers, and if you have a quality receiver or amplifier to drive them with, they really can sound quite good. So there's my review of the Sony B3000 speakers. Not the greatest set of speakers in the world. I've certainly heard speakers that sound better. But I have also heard speakers that you pay a lot more for that sound worse. So uh, not a bad deal at all, especially if you're on a budget and you find yourself in need of a set of speakers very quickly, as I did last week when my Polk Audio speakers died. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out Interface every Friday at 7 o'clock Eastern Time U.S. That is 4 o'clock Pacific. Check it out live right here at live.scottydonline.com. Also, don't forget we want you to be a part of the community. Always uh, looking for your contributions for our blog. Your video contributions are welcome as well. Just check out the website for details on how you can do that. And also check out the gear store where you can get some pretty neat interface merchandise. And uh, don't forget as well that all of our video vignettes and past shows are available on demand. Just click on the archives button here at the webpage live.scottydonline.com. JC for Interface, waving bye-bye.